Well, good morning. Bless God Almighty. We are thankful for your being present here today. We are certainly grateful for our Facebook supporters, all of you. Thank God uh, for your joining in with us today. And we're just blessed of the Lord. He is good. He is good. And when I say he is good, I mean he is absolutely good. And I tell you, we are blessed to be in the presence of the Lord. Thank all of you for being here. We want you to be praying for us. We pray for you, and and, uh, we just pray one for the other. Uh, We thank God for uh, you see on the screen, and uh, there are a number of birthdays. Uh, this month, and uh, certainly God, thank God for all of the birthdays, and we thank God uh, for all of the things that's going on in our church. Thank you for coming uh, to Sunday School. Those of you who were here this morning, that was a great uh, time that we had together, especially in the uh, adult class, and I'm sure that in the other classes as well. We thank you for just being a part. Amen. It means a whole lot. Uh, This is uh, coming up on our uh, fifth Sunday next week, and I just want to uh, drop this in our spirits on the next weekend. We will have our sectional meeting, and it will be at the Ebenezer, Great Ebenezer Baptist Church on Saturday, and uh, starting Saturday, so, and uh, the uh, women and the ministers and deacons will be at Ebenezer all of the others will be here at St. Mark uh, that would need uh, to be. So God bless and God keep us all uh, is our prayer. Amen. Well, we're thankful again. We just thank God for his grace, his mercy. He is so good. He is so wonderful. I mean, he is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Amen, 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 amen. We're going to go ahead and open up. Uh, I'm going to ask if Minister Nikki will come and just lead us in a devotional in her own way. And uh, after which uh, our choir, a portion of our choir, they're going to be singing for us this morning. So let's just pray together, believe together, and just lift up the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can we do that? Thank you. Thank you, Facebook listeners. Thank you uh, for joining in. May God bless and keep you as our prayer. Amen. Amen. Truly, it's a blessing um, to be in the house of the Lord on today. It's good to see all of you and all of you who are watching via Facebook. We're so glad that you tuned in this morning. Yes, yes. Our scripture this morning will come from Psalms 139. It says, O Lord, you have examined my heart. And know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such wonderful, such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. That scripture says God is all seeing, all knowing, and all powerful and everywhere present. He knows all about you this morning. I have read for you Psalms 139, um, the first through the sixth verse. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearer and the receiver of his holy word. Amen. Amen. If you would this morning, if you would just clear your hearts and your minds this morning, and let's just get our mind focused on the man who sits high and looks low this morning. I know that there are some of you that are petitioning God for something on this morning, and I believe it's a great day. It's a great day to believe him for the things that you stand in the need of. But it's an even great day to believe God for somebody else Mm -hmm. who stands in the need of something on this morning. 
Heavenly Father, we are so grateful. God, we're thankful for this opportunity just to be able to come before your presence. God, we thank you for those that you allowed to be able to come out today. God, we thank you for those who are watching via Facebook. God, we thank you, oh God, that you gave us the activities of our limbs today. Nobody had to help us get dressed this morning. Nobody had to help us to be able to come here. But God, you made all of that possible this morning, and we're thankful. We're yes, thankful yes. because we could be laying in a hospital bed this morning, but you saw fit to see differently, oh God. We thank you, oh God, because you are Alpha and Omega this morning. God, you, you know, as the scripture says, all about us. And God, we thank you for that. We thank you for the favor that you've placed upon our life. God, we thank you even more for the purpose that you have purposed us with, the reason that you have us here on this journey called life. God, we thank you this morning. God, we thank you for those who are sick in their body. God, we ask that right now from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, God, that you would touch them in a miraculous way, oh God. God, we pray this morning for Sister Lo this morning. We pray that you will continue to be with her and to mold and shape her, oh God, into all that you will see fit. God, we thank you this morning for Sister Ashley. God, we thank you for what you're doing in her life, what you've done in her life, and God, what you're yet to do. God, we ask that you continue to bless her, oh God. God, we uh, bless your name this morning for Sister Tripp. We're so glad that she's able to be here with us this morning. God, we thank you for all that you're doing for her. We thank you for her daughter today and how she loves and cares for her, oh God. God, we ask that you continue to give her the strength, oh God. For God, it's a journey that's not easy. But you told us, oh God, that you would never give us more than what we could bear. That you told us this morning that all of our help this morning, that it comes from you. God, you told us that you would never leave us. And God, you told us that you would never forsake us. God, you told us that everything that we ask for in your name, oh God, that it shall be done today. So God, today we ask for healing today. We ask for deliverance today. God, we ask for you to keep us in our right mind today. Oh God, sometimes the enemy, he comes in, oh God, and he tries to attack and he tries to weigh us down. But God, you told us to look to the hills this morning from where all of our help Help comes from. For God, you told us that all of our help this morning, that it comes from you, oh God. You told us to cast all our cares upon you, oh God. For God, you said that you cared for us, oh God. For God, you told us that weeping it may endure for a night. But God, you told us on one bright morning, oh God, you told us that that thing called joy, oh God, that unspeakable joy, oh God, that it would come again, oh God. So today, oh God, we're petitioning you today for joy, oh God. Hmm. We're petitioning you today, oh God, for peace, oh God. For God, we're lifting up our heads this morning and we're looking up to you, oh God. So God, we give you glory in this place right now, oh God. God, we stand before you, oh God, asking for forgiveness for anything, oh God, that we've done or said that was not pleasing in your sight today. God, we ask for forgiveness, oh God. We ask that you would cleanse us, oh God, and renew a right spirit within us, oh God. God, you, we ask that you would open up our ears this morning so that we can get in tune with whatever you have to say with us, oh God. God, we ask that you open up our hearts this morning so everything that's not like you can leave, oh God, and everything that consists of you, oh God, will reign over us right now, oh God. God, we're lifting our hands up this morning and we're giving it all over to you, oh God. Everything we're God, oh God, everything we're not, oh God, we're giving it all to you today, oh God. Everything we're going through today, oh God, we're leaving it here at the altar, oh God. 
God. Everything, oh God, that we stand in the need of right now, oh God, we're reaching up, oh God, and decreeing and declaring, oh God, that our blessings are yet on the way, oh God. You told us today, oh God, that all that we need, oh God, that it's already there, oh God. So God, we're believing right now like never before, oh God, that it's already done, oh God. God, we say thank you right now, oh God. Thank you for what you're doing, oh God. Thank you for the way that you're about to make, oh God. Thank you for the healing right now, oh God. Thank you for the peace right now, oh God. Thank you for the joy right now, oh God. Thank you for wiping the tears away right now, oh God. Thank you for the unspeakable joy, God. God, we give you glory in this place. And God, we say have your way here today, oh God. Have your way right now today, oh God. God, I ask that you have your way, oh God, in my mother's life. Two weekends, oh God, two weeks. We spend many hours at the hospital, oh God. And even when it gets to look a little weary, oh God, you keep on showing up. You keep on making a way, oh God. You keep on doing what looks impossible, oh God. You keep on showing up, and for that, oh God, I say thank you today. Thank you right now, God. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for showing up today, oh God. If he showed up in your life today, it's a good reason to say thank you right now. If he showed up for somebody in your family today, it's a good reason to say thank you. And if you're still waiting for him to show up in your life, just go ahead and believe him and say thank you right now, oh God. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen.
like a rock. Anybody here know Jesus? Anybody here know Jesus? Anybody here know Jesus? He's like a rock. And he's my will. Thank you, thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's my rock and he's my shield. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Amen, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank everyone for uh, being here. We're blessed uh, to have your presence. Amen. I would that you turn with me to the 19th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. 19th chapter of Acts. Amen. Thank you so much. Choir, thank you, thank you, Amen. Minister Nikki, thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Just appreciate everyone who's here and everyone who is taking part in making the service what it has been and what it is uh, here today. Amen. Amen. Again, we're always thankful for our Facebook supporters. God bless you. And God keep you is our prayer. Amen. The 19th, 19th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, if you'll stand as we honor the reading of the word. Amen, amen. I want to uh, start reading uh, at verse 1. At verse 1. Amen, amen. These words are found therein. And it happened while Paulus was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive? the Holy Ghost when you believe. So they said to him, we have not so much heard whether there is a Holy Ghost. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who come after him. That is on Jesus Christ. For emphasis, I want to uh, 
uh, read again. And he and it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper region, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples, he said, did you receive the Holy Ghost when you believed? So they said, we have not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Spirit. Yeah. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? I just want to talk today from uh, this thought. It's a question. Why do you ask? Why do you ask? Amen. This is a uh, a great day, a great day to be alive, a great day to trust in our Lord and our Savior, uh, Jesus the Christ. And we see here in the text where we're told uh, that uh, Apollos was at Corinth, and of course Paul having passed through the upper coast of Ephesus, Finding certain disciples, he said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They answered with a strange answer. They seemed to have heard something about baptism but when he asked had they received the Holy Ghost it appears that they really didn't know anything about the Holy Ghost in fact they answered by saying we have not so much heard as to whether there be a Holy Ghost Paul, being inquisitive, asked the question then, how were you baptized? And into who were you baptized? It appears that their teaching went only as far as John the Baptist. John, the forerunner of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. John who came and he baptized and while he was baptizing at the Jordan and he baptized Jesus and we're told that a dove ascended upon him and there was a voice that spoke out of heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. They knew something of John, but they did not really have a good teaching at this point in their lives about the Holy Ghost. I think it's important, and I asked the question, why, why do you ask? Every once in a while, people ask us questions. And it is not always because they don't have an answer. And sometimes we find ourselves wondering, as they ask us the question, we think within our minds, it's strange that you ask me that. In fact, why did you ask me that? And some of us in our day and time, we would have said something like, that's between God and I. 
that's, what, what does that matter to you? What, why are you getting into my personal business? Here Paul is going to a people that he didn't even know. And he gets personal with them about their religious status or status at this point and ask them, have you? Now, apparently he's found out they have been baptized. They had some kind of communication. They had some kind of religious background. But he asked the question, a most important question, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? That's, that's a, I mean, it's not a hard question. And it might be what you call even a yes or no question. But they said, we have not so much heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. Then how were you baptized? We were baptized unto John's baptism. My brothers and sisters, as I try to minister to you here this morning. I've, I've discovered in something in life of my tenure of preaching and even before I began preaching. But in these latter days, I have come to understand more and more. Sometimes, Brother Moxley, when people ask us a question, that question is really not the question that we need to just be concerned with. There are other questions that ought to come up in our minds. And that may be a personal question. Why did he ask me that? What? Why is he concerned about whether I have received the Holy Ghost or not? Every now and then, God will allow us to hear a question to motivate us to ask ourselves a question. What, why did... Why did Paul need, out of all of the questions he could have asked, why did he ask that question? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Could it be that he was asking that question because even upon a short visit, he could detect something about their religiosity, but he noticed something was missing. I mean, after all, he really hadn't been there that long. How, how, could, how, can, how could Paul even make a judgment call to even ask them? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Well, you got to understand that was Paul's business. He, once he came to know the Lord, he decided, I'm going all the way with this. I'm going to believe all the way. Because Paul had decided what he had gotten and what he had learned, what he had observed about the Lord, he said, I didn't get that just anywhere. I went down to Arabia and I stayed there 
for a couple of years and I spent some quality and personal time with the Lord. And I know once you come to receive him, once you go through baptism, once you get this, once you get that, that there are some changes that ought to take place in your life that ought to just stick out like a sore thumb. You, you've been baptized? Yes, you, you've been baptized. But there is a question I need to ask you. Since you have been baptized, have you received the Holy Ghost? You would think they would be familiar from all of the teaching that was going on in that day and in that time and thinking about the Christ who had been crucified, nailed to the cross, died and put in a borrowed tomb and the third day morning got up from the grave. And before ascending back to heaven, he met his disciples on a hill and says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Go ye therefore teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. Possibly you've had an encounter with the Father. Possibly you've had an encounter with the Son. But have you had an encounter with the Holy Ghost? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? How are you going to ask me? You had not been around me that long. You just... You just got here. And I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, there are people who have a spirit of discernment. And they can discern whether you have really been in the presence of the Lord or have you really had an anointing from the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Have you Receive the Holy Ghost since you believe. <sighs> wow. You do know, I believe it's over in 1 Peter, maybe 2 Peter. Uh, uh, Peter says, be ready always to give an answer concerning your hope. And he says, do it with kindness, do it with gentleness, but be ready to give an answer. When people ask you about, have you been born again? Have you been washed in the blood of the lamb? Have you received the Holy Ghost? Be ready to give them an answer. And I tend to think even in the day in which we live, Right now, there are many people who are in the church, have been in the church, was baptized years ago, and the question is still on the floor. Have you received the Holy Ghost? Since you believe, you've been singing in the choir, have you received the Holy Ghost? Have you a servant on the worship board? Have you received the Holy Ghost? You are a deacon. Have you received the Holy Ghost? You are a trustee. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And oh, what a dangerous statement to have been in the church five years, 10 years, 15, 20 30, even 40 years and have to answer, we have not so much heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. We sing a song sometimes say, if you're happy and you know it, 
say amen. So, somewhere, your heart, your, your life ought to show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. If you've received the Holy Ghost, you ought to be able to say amen. If you've received the Holy Ghost, there ought to be a difference in your walk, a difference in your talk. There ought to be, hey, glory. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Let me, let me, ask you, let me say this, and I'm almost through. Sometimes when people ask you a question, you've got to, you, you got to stop and ask yourself, why are they asking me this? What, why are they meddling into my business? What, what difference does it make about whether I, do you have the Holy Ghost? You, you, you know, we quick to try to move the emphasis, emphasis somewhere else. Have you received the Holy Ghost since? You believe? One, one of the things I've, I've discovered in life, uh, Kathy and I have been married now 46 years. 46 years. Praise God Almighty. Praise God Almighty. I don't go around asking her every day, do you love me? She's not walking around every day asking, do you love me? And I have a sneaky suspicion when there is a wife who has to ask her husband almost on a daily basis, do you love me? Apparently something is going on that is not showing up. So if, 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 you, if you've received the Holy Ghost and you still acted nasty, you've received the Holy Ghost, you still cussing and fussing, you've received the Holy Ghost, you can't say hi. You received the Holy Ghost, you can't say thank you. You received the Holy Ghost, you can never say amen. You receive the Holy Ghost. You never get happy and excited. There is something wrong. You ask me why I'm asking you the question. You ought to be asking yourself the question. Why is he asking me that? What is he seeing? What are they seeing in me that they feel like they have to ask me that question? I'm almost finished. But, but, but it, don't you think it's strange? Don't you think it's strange that Peter had been with the master and he had been close to the master? He had walked with him. He had Experience seeing him feed the poor. Christ allowed him to walk out on the waters. Christ had healed his mother-in-law. Christ had did all of these things for him. And Jesus had to ask him, Peter, do you love me? I mean. He was the, he was, he was actually the top man in the group. And here, the master, even after he had died, buried, and rose again, he goes and meet with them on the lake and said, Peter, do you love me? He didn't only ask him that one time. He asked that 
a second time. He asked that a third time. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Feed my... Do you love me, man? And, <laughs> and sometimes I, I, I uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still growing and I'm developing, you know, and every time, you know, every, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm kind of messing with my wife, and uh, she tells me some blah blah blah, and then she have this little little look that she'll look back and she said, did, did I detect some two in that? <laughs> I said, no, ma'am. <laughs> no, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, Lord. Peter, do you love me? And he gets a little toot in it. He said, yes, Lord. You know I love you. You know everything. Why are you asking me? Do I love you? Then do what I call you to do. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe it would be criminal for over 2,000 years now for us to have been in church even as long as St. Mark has existed. And we would have to answer by saying, We've not even so much heard. Whether there be any Holy Ghost or be any Holy Ghost. What your pastor preaching? What your teachers teaching? What are your leaders teaching? I mean, not only have you not received him, you never heard of him. There's only one thing worse than that, in, in my opinion. To have heard of him and to profess that you have received him and won't obey him. Receive the Holy Ghost since you believe, when you believe. We've not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Then how were you baptized? We were baptized under John's baptism. John came preaching in the wilderness. And his preaching was, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. You a follower of the Lord? Question, did you repent? Do you believe? Have you received? Jesus Christ told his disciples, I go away, but I will send you another comforter who will be in you, who will lead you and guide you into all ways of truth. The paraclete, the come alongside. 
we're scared, we're shaking in our boots. And I'm telling you, this is a cold world. It's cold out here. Every time you turn on your television, there's killing here, killing there, killing everywhere. When I was a young lad, I grew up in Benton, Arkansas, and I heard about all of the killing. It was in Rockford, Illinois. It was in Chicago, Illinois. It was in Los Angeles, California. It was in these larger cities and places, but the day is right around our own front door. If you ever needed the Lord before, you sure do need him right now. We need him every day. We need him every hour. In the morning, in the evening, late at night, we need him. In the church, church of God in Christ, I grew up around Church of God in Christ. I've been Baptist all my life. I grew up around Church of God in Christ. And you, 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 you hear that old preacher every once in a while in what we call the hole in this church. He said, brethren, sisters, you can say what you want to, but holiness is right. And I want to tell you, it ain't a Kojic thing. It ain't a church of God Christ thing. It ain't a Baptist thing. It's a God thing. God wants us to live holy. He wants us to live right. And there's no holiness as I close without the fruits of the Spirit. Love. Joy. Peace. Gentleness. Woo. But Pastor, you don't know what he did to me. You don't know how he treated me. I don't. But he does. He does. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? There's a process, my brothers and sisters. He wants to give us the Holy Ghost. But the place to start is believe. What do I believe? I believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. John says, repent and be baptized. Every one of you. Peter says, in the name of Jesus Christ. And ye shall receive the gift of the Spirit. Do it for the remission of sin. God is a good God. While every head is bowed in this place, every eye is closed, we want to believe God today. That God would breathe upon all of us. We want to believe. We can speak in tongues and all of that's good. And that's a part of it. But if you refuse to love one another, it's still questionable whether you've received the Holy Ghost. 
maybe somebody today wants to just cry out and say, Spirit, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh. Fall fresh upon me. God loves us. And he wants us to receive power. That power is from the Holy Ghost. Yes, John baptized in water. He baptized. And his message was he was not that light. The first John, John the writer says, John, he was not that light. But he came to bear witness of the light, of that light that shined in darkness, and men comprehended it not. There may be somebody here listening today, and maybe you're saying, Pastor, I'm glad you made mention of this. Maybe that's a question to me. And maybe I've been thinking about receiving the Holy Ghost and I want the Holy Spirit to take up residence in my life I want to believe I want to receive the power, the anointing of God's Holy Spirit I'm walking around in fear I'm walking around unable to forgive and to, unable to go to sleep at night I need your spirit I need your power you may be listening to me over the Facebook maybe you too are saying pray for me pastor I need help I've gone through some things, I just can't shake it. It seemed like instead of getting better and the glow getting lighter, it gets harder. But we believe with you to help, we can do all things through you who strengthen us. Hallelujah. If you're here today and the Spirit of the Lord speaks to your heart and you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, this is a good day to do it. If you're on the Facebook and you can just put it in the comments, and I promise you, we'll get in touch with you. God is good. He's good. He's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Doors of the church is open by letter Christian experience. Candidate for baptism. This is a good day to trust the Lord. Know that He is good. That it is He who's made us, not we ourselves. I hope something has been said that will inspire our hearts, our minds. Help us to trust the God of glory even the more. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we prepare to close, we want to just say to you, you know how we do our offering and if anyone wants to share with us from the Facebook you can go there and uh, and give to Givelify. We just want God's people to grow in the spirit, grow in faith, and walk in a way that pleases God Almighty. Amen. Let us remember on next week will be our, from the Southwest District in Section 3, we will be having our uh, fifth uh, 
Saturday, Sunday uh, services, and uh, it will be at the Great Ebenezer Baptist Church here in Section 3. And uh, also uh, on that Sunday, our singing will be at Mons Chapel in uh, Prescott. So we invite all of those who can, who will, who would like to, uh, to take part and share in that. Amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Sister Daisy. Okay. Sure, go ahead. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we uh, certainly lift up to you this family and all of that uh, that's going on. We pray that you would move in a mighty way. God, we live in a world where if there's not one thing, there's another. And there's something going on all the time. And we pray, God, that you would intervene, you would move in such a miraculous way that you allow your mercy to flow like rivers of waters. We've seen on the screen even today the list of names people who are going through and having a rough time. God, we just pray that you would move Allow your mercy to flow. Allow your healing, God. There are things that's going on, not only with Sister Daisy, there are other people in this house that's going through some tough situations. And we don't want to try to minimize any of them because we know that all of these things can be a heavy burden upon families. And so God, would you please move right now? Sister Walker, God, would you please move? The Gabbard family, please move, God. Touch throughout the land, throughout the country. Have your way. There are people who are listening to us over Facebook right now. Struggling, trying to make it from one day to the other. Would you please have mercy? God, we pray for our nation as a whole. Every time we turn on the television, random shooting, killing, crime everywhere. God, we pray for your strength, your power. We pray for healing like never before. Please, sir, look and have mercy. Sister Ashley, Mother Jackson, oh, God, have mercy, we pray. Use us, Lord, in thy service. Draw us nearer each and every day. 
guide us over, God. Thou great Jehovah, as we pilgrim through this very land, we're weak, God, but thou art mighty. Hold us, I pray, with your powerful hand. Use us, Lord, in thy service. Let your holiness saturate our heart, our minds, our spirits. God, when we feel that we are stumbling in the dark and we're all by ourselves, we pray, God, that you would intervene. Help us, dear God. Help us through the day, through the night, through the storms, through the winds, through the high waters, through the floods. Bless right now. Breathe upon us, God. Breathe, Lord. Heal in God. Heal. Heal in God. Heal in God. Not only of the physical body, but God, the spirit man. The minds, God. There are so many people who are struggling in their minds. I pray that you give a peace, a peace that passes all understanding. I know you can do it. You've done it before. And you are the same today, yesterday. And we could stand here, God, and we could take up time and tell about all of the people you heal throughout scripture. We could tell about people that you've healed that we personally know. But God, in the midst of all, not only have you done it before, you can do it again. And we ask you to grant it, God, according to your own good will, to your own good pleasure. To you that is able, God, to keep us from falling and to present us spotless before the Father in heaven. Your love, your majesty, the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide with us now and forever. Heal, God. Heal the cancer, God. Hey God, heal the motion day. Heal God. Restore the burnout. Restore God. Those who have lost material possession. Do it, Lord. Open up hearts that we can reach out and touch somebody and make this a better world if we can. Bless all that we're to pray for. In your son Jesus' name, we give you glory. We thank you, sir. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Be blessed and uh, stay with the Lord. Amen. God bless.